I'm back. So, uh, yeah, what's been happening since I've been away? It, it doesn't really look like much, does it? Anyway, don't worry, I'm back now. I'm back off my holiday. I've been doing partying. I've been, I didn't even actually go on holiday, by the way, just so you know. I mean, I've, I've, I've been off, but I've not been on holiday. But anyway, I've been partying. I've been doing things. I've been not working as best I can not work. But yeah, I think it's time we took this holiday hat off because it is wearing thin on me. I'm just so excited with this hat on, so, yeah, <clears throat> oh god, that's better, it's quite tiring being someone that bold, anyway, um, yeah, so what have we got planned, what's, what's, what's new on the channel, um, well, I think, you know, since I'm back off holiday, it's best we do some learning about eBay, so, yeah, let's get into this, let's do the secrets of souls. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I go about reading sold listings. So um, basically, a few new resellers might not have uh, too much knowledge on how to uh, actually read sold listings. Now, this is just my way of going about it. There are so many different ways you can actually read sold listings. But I'm going to share with you my uh, tips for actually getting quick sales. So, not necessarily getting uh, you know a shoot for the moon price on your items, but actually getting quick, fast sales that you can get some money in, you can get some net profit in, to be able to then reinvest into other items and actually really build a business up. So basically, as you can see here, we're on Bop It Extreme 2, and I've just uh, filtered by end date recent first, and I've obviously filtered by sold listings, and we can see here on the left-hand side, I've specified the condition as used. So what I do is I depend heavily, heavily, and I do want to repeat that because it is quite... Um, important to, to state, I would I do uh, depend on the date. So this is something that maybe not many people give enough emphasis on. So the date at the side here, we can see this one sold at the 17th of August. You can see that I have sorted, as I mentioned, by recent first. So this is all going to be in date order. But you can see we've got 17th of August, 16th of August, 16th, 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 15th. Now, why do I want to look at the date? What's the point in looking at the date? Well, think of eBay sold listings as, as a market because that's what it is. It's a market. All these different um, you know, items are going up and down in value all the time. So if we're looking at things that have sold from a month ago or two months ago or three months ago, um, then it might not give us the accurate data that we need to be able to price our items to sell. So I always look at sort of the first, you know, few days of, uh, of data. So obviously we're now on the 17th of August. So, you know, sometimes I'll maybe go back to the 10th of August, something like that. And we'll see, you know, I'll, I'll look through and I'll try and gauge an average of um, a price from the last seven days because... This tells me that if I price it at an average price over the last seven days, I'm probably going to get that price pretty quickly, depending on uh, the amount of items that are, that are currently listed, or the amount of items, or the, the prices of the current listed items. And we will uh, take a look at the current listings for this particular item in a second. So if we go down to like the 10th, we can see... You know, we've got one uh, fairly low there, 599 plus post, 699 plus post, well that's 9th actually, so we'll ignore that. Uh, 699, uh, that little line for it, if you don't know, it means they accepted a best offer. So we probably accepted like 6 quid or something like that, maybe 5 quid. Um, so that was 6 quid plus posted, something like that. 1499, uh, well ignore that pink one because I'm actually just looking at this one here, uh, unboxed condition, the Bop Extreme 2 original here. Um, 1099, 999. 760 plus post, 849. So you can see there's a lot of low prices around this sort of 10th to 13th. And then we increase a little bit. We've got 1099 plus post, so 13, 14 quid. Uh, basically a 10 of there, 949. 1399, 1499. Uh, again, about 14 quid on this one, 750, so a bit of a lower one. 1499, 1099. And then the most recent one that only sold about 20 minutes ago, 12, 30 minutes ago, was for 16 quid, including postage. So that was pretty decent. So 
really looking at that, I, I know there's been a few sort of low ball ones, but they were a bit further down. They were about a week ago. Really, I would say about sort of 11 to 13 quid or 11 to 14 quid. That sort of range is, is about the range you want to go for. And that is based off the last seven days average. Now, that isn't all we want to do. We want to uncheck sold listings and we want to go and look at the current listing. So, as you say, these are the pink ones. So, I'm not going to uh, look at these because obviously that's a bit different. I want to keep this completely um, fair. So, I want to look at the actual, um, you know, the original ones here. So, you can see there's one on for 12.95, which actually, if we think about it, that's probably about the price that we want to go for. It's, you know, about the average of the last seven days. We've got uh, 7.99 plus postage, 14.99. 10.95 again coming in around that average 9.99 plus 2.99 postage so we can see that most of them there are quite a lot available but most of them are coming in at around that price so then that tells me from just looking at the current data and looking at um, obviously the uh, listed data as well now we do want we don't want to base our price off listed data we don't want to base our price off current listed items we want to be basing our price off solds however in this case and what you may find in some other cases is the kind of the average of, the, of a few of the current listed items are falling in with the average of the sales of the last seven days, the price average. And that's probably because people like me have gone on to sold, checked the price, and then priced in line with that. So there's a sort of a mirrored effect. So really, if if you want to get a sale, and this is all, this um, way of reading sold listings is all about trying to get quick sales, not trying to get a shoot from a moon price, as I mentioned. So um, basically, if you want to get a decent quick sale on this, I would say, you know, between that maybe 11 and 13 pounds, something like that is going to get you a decent quick sale. And you're going to get, let's say you paid a quid for it at car boot, you're going to get a decent, well, you're going to get probably just over a five net profit, you know, six, seven quid, something like that. Um, obviously, depend on postage uh, option you choose and all that sort of stuff. Um, but you can see you're going to get a decent amount and then you can use that money to then flip into another item that's maybe a bit more of a higher value item and you can use the same principle on that to then generate a quick sale on that and before you know it, it builds and it builds and it builds. Now what some people do with their sold listings research is go to highest price plus PMP. Now that is completely fine. I don't have any quarrels with people doing that. But what you'll find is, look at this one here. This is a perfect example. We're, not, we're going to ignore these because these are boxed. Um, I know they are pre-owned, but they're boxed. So that does affect the price slightly. So we're going to stick with like unboxed versions. So Boppy Extreme 2 in excellent working condition. 1998 sold on the 4th of June. Now, for one, a red flag for me is that we're not looking at current data. This was two months ago. Oh, well, two and a half months ago. Um, but... Another red flag for me is we don't know, well, just like the other ones, really, but we don't know how long it took this guy or this girl or whoever's selling it to get that 1998. 1998. They could have been sat on it for a while. The chances are they might have been sat on it for a while. You know, to get a price like that, they might have done. Now, okay, you could say that it's a decent photo. You could say maybe, you know, someone just came along, saw the value in that item, saw the value in that listing, in the photograph and stuff and thought, yeah, I'm going to buy that for 19.98. And they could have been somewhat lucky and got a quick sale for that price as well. That's also uh, worth considering. But if you want to get more, I would never say a guaranteed sale, but if you want to get a quick sale that is very, very close to guaranteed, Pricing a lower amount in line with the current data from the last seven days is going to get you that sale more often than not opposed to getting this uh, sale here. Now, if you're a more experienced reseller, you might be quite happy to do a lovely photo, really pack your title with keywords, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, like this title up here, uh, really pack it with keywords in there unlike this title actually but really pack it with keywords and price it at 19.99 and let it sit that is completely fine great way to go about it if that's what you want to do but what i'm actually concerned about at the moment 
is new resellers pricing things high like this because they um, obviously specify highest price plus PMP on a generalist item that there is a lot readily available for a lot cheaper price. Um, they're pricing high, they're then expecting it to sell within a couple of days or a week and then they're getting disheartened over the weeks because their item isn't selling. And this is because they're not understanding uh, supply and demand, they're not understanding how to read sold listings effectively to be able to get a quick sale. You can get a sale for £20 on a bop it, but you've got to be aware that you've got you've got to be patient. You've got to wait a little bit to get that in most cases. But if you want to get, you know, 12 95 11 95 that sort of price, then you can do so within a few days most probably. So uh, just remember that distinction. You can do it both ways. Both ways are completely right, completely fair. But you've got to remember that one way might need a little bit more patience. Another way might not need as much patience, but obviously you're going to take a bit of a lower price. So if you're a new reseller, bear that in mind. Uh, maybe, you know, if you want to tweak your prices a little bit in line with the current sold data, then you'll get more of those sales in, which will then boost your confidence as a new reseller. And then over time, once you've got more experience, you can then think to yourself, right, I'm prepared to wait on this item. I'm going to uh, price this high and wait. So if we look at this ghost train here, um, which is, this is Dennis Fisher ghost train. You can see this is a completely different um, sort of mindset we've got to come into when looking at sold listings. Because you see, there's only two of these available on listed. And if we go into sold listings, you can see in a second, there's there's not many sold, you know, there's a few. But there's not there's not as many as the boppets. I mean, I could have scrolled down that boppet list for quite a while. Um, and you can see here... We're all over the place. Now, this is what I'm talking about, about looking at the dates at the side, because these have sold. That one was just over a month ago. That 21st uh, of June was almost two months ago. And you can see we got £15 and £19. If you were to look at those listings that are slightly outdated on their sort of... Um, or what do you call it, the date is slightly outdated. Uh, well, it's just sli slightly outdated, actually. Um, but you can see that that's 99 now. Now, if you're pricing based on that... You've, you've probably just undersold this item by quite a lot because you're looking at outdated uh, information. Again, even with this one, this was a month ago, so you could even say that's slightly outdated. This one was my sale, and if you look after this sale, here, I priced at 59.99. I just whacked that price on. I paid a fiver. I looked at the data that was available, and I saw that maybe, you know, some of these guys here were underpricing it. So I just whacked on a higher price. Now, if you look after that, we can see on the 30th of July, so we're getting a little bit more current data here. There's 59.99. Then 5th of August, which is really current, one on bids that was complete, like mine was complete, went for £72. And then this one here, you might think, oh, well, that's basically that must have just been lucky because this one got 11 quid on bids. This one got 11 quid on bids because as you can see here, some bits missing. All these other ones were complete. My one, this one, and this one were complete. So essentially, we now want to go back on sold listings. We can see that current, the current data is showing that really you wouldn't want to be listing this in complete condition for less than 59.99 plus postage. You see on bids here, um, one's on 20 quid, one's on at 16 quid. But obviously these are going to finish in the next, well, you know, maximum in eight days. So, and also there's no buy it nows on. So you've not, not got any competition with buy it now. And these auction listings are going to be ending very, very soon. So with something like this, you can then use your initiative a little bit. And you go back onto sold, you can see that those uh, listed, uh, that listed data there. Obviously those auctions are going to finish, so that's cool. You can see... But actually, you might want to go quite high on this listing. You might want to go $79.99. If yours is in good condition, $79.99, something like that. Wait it out on buy it now. But because this is even better and this is even more crucial, looking at the listed, because there's not many listed, but there is some good search volume for this item. I know that because I've sold this item. And I've researched this item a little bit more. Um, we can see that there is some good search volume for this item. We know that it is an item that certain people like, that collectors do like. 
even if you go in at $79.99, you're pr even though it's a high price, because there's not many much competition and because there are people looking for it week in, week out, it will mean that you will still get that sale pretty quickly. Uh, you'll probably get that sale within a month, I would say. Maybe even less than that. Maybe within a couple of weeks. It, it, you know, you can never say, look, you're going to get that sale in this exact time frame to the minute or whatever but you can certainly say you know looking at this even if you were to price quite high because there's not many available and stuff you're gonna get that sale pretty quickly so this is a perfect example of a listing that you want to be shooting high on and this is the kind of things you want to look at when you're thinking right this is an item that I can I can shoot high on and I'll still get the sale pretty quickly. This is the type of item that is very generalist, there's lots available and if you shoot high you might be waiting a while because you're waiting for someone to come along to at least see some value in your listing um, opposed to someone else's and if they can't see seven or eight pounds more worth of value if you've priced at 20 quid and everyone else is at 13, 12 or 13 then they're just going to go for that 12 or 13. So that's why it may take longer to sell a generalist item at 20 quid opposed to something that is a vintage item that's a little bit more sought after and that's a little bit more rare. You can get a higher price and you can get it quicker in most circumstances. Or you can get it quite quickly, I should say, um, than you know, a complete generalist item that you're pricing quite high. So they're like the two types of of ways of reading and sold listings. There are other ways of reading and sold listings. I mean, you can literally filter it however you like, um, and you can read it however you like, but certainly they're the two ones that I go off to price my items, and they work really, really well. Um, I recently had a Sid, uh, not Sid, um, Neil, Neil the so Sofa Works uh, Sophology plush toy, and I saw the sold data over the last week, I kept the data current, you know, over the last uh, week, not looking at, obviously, outdated information, and I priced in line with that, and I got the sale within a couple of days, really, really happy, I didn't necessarily undersell it, because I was pricing in line with the current data, but I was doing what's known as pricing to sell, and that is where you price in line with the most current data and you get that sale quickly instead of waiting on it. So I hope that this video has given you some good information on how to read sold listings or how I go about reading sold listings at least. I do really hope that this helps encourage new resellers to price their items in maybe a little bit of a different way so that they can get more confidence in the short term and in the longer term to be able to become more proficient resellers and to be able to be become better and, and really stick with reselling because I think a lot of people at the moment, new resellers are getting disheartened. Maybe that is because it's just generally slow in the summer anyway and it's been quite slow this summer. Um, or maybe it is because certain resellers, certain new resellers aren't quite... Um, reading sold listings in the best way and that's no fault of their own that is simply just because they're new and they've not got as much experience as someone like myself who's been doing this a couple of years or someone like who's got more experience than me who's obviously you know other people on YouTube uh, you know some of the American guys obviously other people in the UK have got more experience than me so it's just kind of your experience level on, on how you'll be able to price things to sell and how you'll be able to read uh, sold listings better in the future. So anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. I won't ramble any longer. Obviously, you'll see throughout this video, there's been like a little uh, scrolling text bar. Uh, please have a look at that. Obviously, there's packaging links in the description. So if you need any packaging materials or anything like that, please do feel free. Go down and you can purchase some of those. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's at adsrobo96. I do post on there quite frequently, or at least I'm trying trying to at the moment and don't forget to check out any of my other videos for any more information and with that being said I'll leave it there don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already like the video and I will see you in the next one so I'll see you very soon guys